Yo, pessoal! Estão ao vivo! <risos> Como é que é? Então, hoje estou outra vez a trabalhar com um Novidade! Só que, I'm making a very big mess. Um, estou a roçar e basicamente o aspecto com que as coisas ficam é assim. Parece que está tudo assim meio destruído. Deixei um rastro de destruição. Mas abri todos os caminhos para vos mostrar. Vou virar a câmera. Assim, caminhos todos abertos. Ainda está cheio desta matéria orgânica. Está quase em forma de polpa. Mas está altamente, mano. Acho que dei a volta toda ao jardim, só ali um mini espaço, como é que é Pedro Saraiva? Está-se bem, puto? Yeah. Então, recei isto tudo, para lá, deixa lá ver, esta cena está a atrofiar. Uh! Yeah. Isto está assim. Abri todos os espaços. Isto era o sítio onde eu entrei no outro dia. Inga Chantal, como é que é? E então... Está tudo limpinho. Está tudo limpinho, mas tudo cheio de... Deste material. <risos> Pá, quando chover isso há de... há de limpar outra vez. Às vezes... É um pouco chato quando tu trabalhas com a roçadora e, e basicamente ela... Tu, né? Pá, a roçadora é uma ferramenta super potente, não é? E... Os caminhos ficam assim todos limpos, só que... Pá, quem sofre mais no meio disto são estes gajos aqui. Sistema de irrigação... Quando tu entras no flow, pá, arrancas uns quantos. Ah, por acaso, olha, aqui esqueci-me de limpar. Isto é um caminho. Também tantas plantas a crescer por aqui. E... O espaço fica assim. Agora, claro, isto está é tudo castanho. Porquê? Porque... O que é que a natureza faz? As, todas as ervas que crescem no jardim, né? elas acabam por, uh, por ocupar o espaço, não é? E qualquer, qualquer, uh, um, qualquer objeto que esteja no caminho, há sempre matéria orgânica a mexer-se com o vento ou com, com a água e então acumula-se nos sítios e então o que vocês veem depois é principalmente nos sítios da calçada vou virar a câmera outra vez para vocês verem no triângulo nos sítios da calçada vocês veem assim imensa acumulação de terra que depois já é matéria orgânica que se começa a decompor não é? por exemplo aqui se calhar não foi muito fundo aqui não é? ainda tem ervas que sobreviveram aqui o esta intervenção pá, isso são mesmo tipo elas ocupam o um espaço, não é? no outro dia quando eu fiz o último face, um dos últimos facebook lives que eu fiz basicamente era era a cena de ah, a natureza não permite espaços, espaços vazios não é? ela ocupa sempre eu faço a calçada com terra para a água se poder infiltrar uh, e a desvantagem é as, as ervas daninhas que começam a crescer uh, no meio da calçada e pronto então pois ervas daninhas eu estou a chamá-las ervas daninhas mas pá, são plantas não é? é natureza a natureza tenta preencher os nichos ecológicos que estão vazios e é natural que elas uh, ocupem o espaço, uh, é tipo nicho de mercado, mesma coisa, vocês veem uma, 
principalmente agora, neste momento, existe, existem imensos nichos de mercado, como nós estamos numa, numa, como é que se diz, numa depression, numa recession económica, basicamente já os mercados estão todos em baixo, menos alguns, que estão super altos, tipo Amazon e por aí adiante. Porquê? Porque o pessoal começa a encomendar cenas e começam a... Né, o Zoom também subiu e por aí adiante. Uh, porquê? Porque as pessoas estão, estão a dar mais valor a estas empresas agora. Mesma coisa na ecologia. É por isso que economia e ecologia têm o mesmo início. É um ecossistema em que existem trocas. E então acontece isso, exatamente. No outro dia... Vou virar a câmera outra vez. E olha lá, eu faço um live. Agora não. Agora não. Então, então, isto aqui são os trevos. Isto são os trevos que eu só lhes dei uma roçazinha assim por cima para deixar a parte a parte do rizoma ou a parte de cima uh, desculpem a, a, a parte de cima cortada e a parte de baixo intacta não é ela continua aqui com estas partes ela está toda enraizada ainda agora quando é relvas eu vou mesmo até o, até o coto é como corta unhas as relvas eu vou mesmo até o até a, a parte mais funda mas por exemplo vocês veem aqui esta ainda tem raiz Pronto, olha, está-se bem. Está com a luz ligada, já. Yeah. E pronto. Já. Um, yeah. A roçar. Agora, só, só eu ter limpo os meus caminhos vai-me dar imensa matéria orgânica. E, e essa matéria orgânica eu vou aproveitar. Agora, provavelmente em algumas zonas eu não vou aproveitar diretamente nos jardins porque essas ervas daninhas desculpem, essa matéria orgânica tenho que parar de dizer esse termo né? um, essa matéria orgânica um, contém sementes dessas relvinhas e por aí adiante agora, quem adora isso? é isso que se faz dentro do design de permacultura quem é que vai usufruir disso e o meu problema vai se tornar uma solução Galinhas, ou oh, tecnicamente até podia pôr no bocachi, não é? o bocachi iria aproveitar o material, uh, neste caso são bactérias anaeróbicas, elas iam fazer uma fermentação desse material, iam aproveitar todos os nutrientes que são contidos lá dentro para os tornar disponíveis para, para depois mais tarde outros seres vão ser as minhocas porque do bocachi normalmente eu passo para as minhocas, eu não sei se vocês viram o episódio do Bokashi, houve um dia que eu falei sobre a... Uh, uh, oh, I have... <laughs> oh, I'm blushing! Thank you, Tiger! How's it going? Um, well, I might continue in English now, because um, I'm back! So I might continue in English, because if there's English speaking people, um, Portuguese people actually speak probably the best Portuguese in terms of pronunciation. This I really uh, leave to the Portuguese, like it has to do with the fact that we have never had uh, doubled movies or something like that. Doubled, I mean, uh, you know, where to speak the the language of the country like in germany this is because the germ uh, this is the reason why the germans they speak like this and the french they speak also uh, be careful <laughs> so um yeah i've streamed my garden with the weed whacker and so i've left a lot of uh, organic matter and what i do with the organic matter is i'm gonna put it uh, in my chicken coop so my chickens transform my problem that was the seeds into nutrients that will give me eggs and so i have transformed something that was a problem for me into a solution which is dinner breakfast or lunch or whatever nutritious food so um 
what else did I want to say? I've been having I've been having a lot of conversations um, about or today actually this subject came up in my mind, which is um, <clears throat> so I was I was kind of a hippie. I'm kind of still are, I am. Give me a second. Let me read this comment. Para poupar trabalho, eu pus as minhas minhocas na terra juntamente com o alimento para elas um metro afastado das plantas. Sim, mas aonde? No. Isso é. I'm I'm reading this comment and I'm um, trying to figure out what he means exactly. So, o que eu faço eu por acaso eu, eu tenho alguns vermicompostores espalhados por vários sítios. Entretanto, só tenho um sítio onde eu tenho as galinhas. Eu tenho esses lixos orgânicos espalhados pelo jardim, de tal forma que eu tenho o mínimo de trabalho possível, se caso eu queira... Um, caso eu queira colocar a matéria orgânica num sítio, não é? Um, isto faz parte do... Segues os princípios do Relative Location, Energy Efficient Planning e. Um, um, sim, uh, basicamente é, é. Think Global, Act Local, não é? Tu estás a colocar as coisas em sítios estratégicos um, para depois também utilizares no, pró no próprio sítio. O, o que está fixe, não é? Uma, uma boa cena que se pode fazer é uma coisa chamada Worm Towers. São basicamente torres que estão... é tipo um tubo que está dentro da terra. Eu aqui neste jardim ainda não tenho nenhum. Um tubo que está dentro da terra tem buracos na parte que está enterrada e basicamente tu colocas toda a matéria orgânica lá dentro. Aquilo te compõe se aquilo tem uma tampa e também um, uma cena para as moscas, uma rede e, e depois a matéria orgânica vai-se compondo, as minhocas podem entrar e podem seguir outra vez e, e largam as suas, o, a, o seu, as, suas, as suas bondades dentro do jardim na terra, não é? Um, worm Tower. Já agora, last thing. Um, actually, I don't really know what language I should speak because I like to speak both, but... Um, um, English is... I don't know, man. I I I like English more, so I'm going to continue in English. Yesterday, I was talking about vertical gardens um, and how to use vertical space, and I completely forgot. Though I don't eat potatoes anymore, but my mom does. Um, I was eating before the leaves of the sweet potato. I'm, I was not eating um, the sweet potatoes themselves because I'm on a ketogenic diet, meaning I don't eat carbohydrates. And for now, I'm on a carnivore diet, so I'm not even eating plants per se. I'm just eating fermented foods, some of them. And so, little disclaimer. So, vertical gardens. I completely forgot this guy. I don't know if you can see it properly. This is like a um, actually Joana Amorim from if you look it up on Instagram it's Silvatica Forest Farm she's got a really nice project they they are in Kentucky in the States and today she actually put a picture of, of one of the shushus that I give to her one of the white ones Chayote um, and and yeah she actually inspired me to do this because she's doing it in one of her gardens she's producing um, potatoes they have really nice potatoes in the States uh, all different kinds of colors and actually I have some purple potatoes and so what I've did uh, what I did like with the idea of producing these for my mom um, because um, She's a diabetic, um, and so I prefer her to be eating complex carbohydrates instead of simple carbohydrates, and preferably uh, highly nutritious ones. So that's why I like the purple ones, because I think with the color they might be more nutritious. And so I've built this thing, which is just a wire, and I rounded it up, and then I close it here, here, there. 
these are like two, right? And I put, I cut a tube, a 16 millimeter tube in half. You can see the detail here, it's cut in half and then I put it around and put some brasadaires, I don't know how you guys, uh, how you call these in English, um, around. And so basically, I've been planting, I've been putting some good soil in here and then some straw all around and this is already a potato plant. This is purple potato and this one is also purple potato. Some worms, uh, some slugs probably might have eaten some of the leaves and here's another one. So, and what I'm gonna do is, like the plant will be growing and then I add some soil to it and then it grows again and I add some soil to it, always um, continuing until basically, hopefully, reaching this height. And then this whole thing, like on the same space, I will have a lot more potatoes. And this is one of the ways where you can um, increase your production on this on a smaller space area or whatever um, because you're going vertical. So basically, it's 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 the analogy of or it's like a predio. <laughs> it's like a, a skyscraper in the garden. So. Um, you can fit in more on the same space and yeah this is one of the ways um, to do that and I actually forgot to add this one to the you know urban farming techniques or suburban farming techniques where you want to increase your productivity in spaces that are actually really small that's why like um, it's it's one of one of the things that is really funny is that um, like which one gives you more work like a one hectare farm or is a homestead at a space like this and I think both give you exactly the same work why because on a larger scale farm you will actually um, just have more space for things to happen so everything is like spaced out <laughs> hey uh, not in that way just there's more space in between all of it and what happens in suburban spaces is that you go a lot more into detail so you're trying to fit in as much stuff as possible in a small space. So you have to increase edge a lot. And this is how I've done this with these wires and all these little paths that I have. And then I have this space here. Actually, I was uh, filming some stuff before. I will turn the camera real quick. Um, I was filming some stuff before these paths like actually saved this one that's a borage borage it's just a little bit dirty because the, the flowers are edible and it's got it will have seeds so I want to have more of that because it's a good plant um, and so yeah I was making some videos of the path this was all closed up and um, and now it's open and you can go through this. So, Comfrey, Permaculture Superstar. I'm gonna turn the camera again. So yeah, um, the thing that came into my mind was, I was introducing the subject, but then my friend made a comment. Um, Pedro Saraiva. Yeah, viu o resto do meu Much love. Um, <clears throat> I was talking about the fact that. Let me get this guy. Um, so, yeah, I kind of. At one point, I thought I was a hippie or something like that. Because I needed to be different. It was a, one of the ways that I felt. Um, um, sticking out in the crowd, you know, avoiding 
one of the things that I actually I learned this from my friend that appeared the other day, Brian Sumner, which is it's like a tongue breaker almost. Um, the anonymity of uniformity. Anonymity of uniformity, meaning that if you are as uniform as everybody else, Rita Lucas, you will definitely like the subject. Um, so, if everybody has a uniform and everybody looks the same and everybody acts the same and everybody does the same and da 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 da, -da everybody's got the same beliefs, what happens is you don't stick out. So, you became anon you become anonymous within that uniformity. That's why I really like that term, anonymity of uniformity. And I actually wanted to avoid that when I was, you know, I don't know, like growing up. So, what? One of the things. Hey, ID, how's it going? Much love. Um. So. Yeah, I was, I, I became kind of dogmatic in my growing up into who I am right now um, or before I turned into the person that I am right now. And so, um, what do I actually want to say with this is, like I've had so many different beliefs and I've been continuing to change them and accepting new beliefs and one of the things that happens is that we become a little bit dogmatic and so the example that I actually want to give you um, especially regarding people like me like I could say like ID with you it's more or less the same you know we kind of had this this uh, feeling of wanting to have something different and um, we're kind of hippies and we are against we were at least I was against the system I'm not against the system anymore uh, one of the things that is a little bit overlooked in permaculture um, because permaculture is is practiced by a lot of hippies um, people that want to have a different paradigm of reality and, and have different want to establish different belief systems um, to help the world become a better place by ourselves being better versions of ourselves as well um, so one of the things like the, the core concept basically is um, many of us like the idea of living in the land and just running away not really running away but many won't see it that way but they just want to be in nature and want to be far away from cities and uh, just want to not know about the system and not have money and um, not contribute to the system and I don't see it that way and the reason is because you will just become a hermit and you know a war against war is a war and if you complain about people complaining you are complaining and I think if you apply this permaculture principle which is integrate rather than segregate what nature actually does nature you know integrate all of us into this <clears throat> ecosystem um, if we do that if we are able to integrate ourselves into these systems and now we as hippies or we as game changers um, becoming professionals you know with the good values, with the purpose, with the, the capacity to learn new things and uh, uh, acknowledging and accepting and implementing and um, what do you call it, what's the word for it? 
just getting new beliefs um, like I think because because if we run away from the system we're just handing it out for everybody else to 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 continue to do whatever they're doing and I think if we come with this new idea and new systems and new new purposes and creating business that actually gives value to people and with purpose um, because purpose is stronger than outcome um, I think this would be the way I think we all have to get really pro in whatever we're doing and doing a really nice job and just you know contribute to the system and kind of calling everybody else that is unhappy with the system to our businesses and and start um, a new paradigm so <clears throat> same thing with technology there's this whole concept in permaculture that is called um, adequate technology it's just technology that is adequate for example I'm a hippie using a smartphone and I'm on a Facebook live and I'm uh, you know using a tripod and whatever um, and I'm using technology but it it just you know like you can use technology if it's for nice good purpose do it you know like you can use Google Calendar for a nice purpose if it's useful and it's if you just get used to using technology in a way that makes your life easier so you can devote yourself to um, having a bigger impact in the world with the purpose with the value then why not so yeah I just wanted to um, give you value in, 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 in this thought process that I have been having about um, you know shying away from money technology business profession professionalism and leadership and you know uh, companies and corporations and so on there is good stuff out there you know and lastly I would just apply this concept that or concept this way of thinking about things that um, what's his name Bruce Lee um, said and I really like that way of thinking which is take what makes makes sense I mean take what makes sense discard what doesn't and give your personal touch to it and yeah like bring your authentic self into whatever it is that you're doing you know and using what makes sense discarding what doesn't and yeah, and everything's going to be all right. So, guys, I hope you had fun. Much love to you. And um, take care of yourself. Tend to your own vibration. Meditate. Be happy. Practice happiness. Ask yourself many times a day, what am I thankful for? What are the good things that we already have? What is the uh, good outcomes? What is what are the best possible outcomes that we can have from all of this? This is changing so many things, and um, and there's always good stuff coming out, and the best ideas always survive. So, guys, much love, love you guys, take care, eh?